to show you how quick and easy it is to design a restoration start to finish. Scan, design, and send a meal. I've entered Terry as a patient of record. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start a new restoration for Terry. We're going to be scanning tooth number three. It is a crown. We also have the option of an inlay, onlay, veneer, and a bridge. We choose our library of anatomy, which I prefer, Lee Culp's library of anatomy. Our material, in this instance, I would choose a low translucency Emax, and Terry's shade is a BL3. I'm ready to now start capturing my digital impression. The tooth does not have to be dry, but what I don't want is any pooling of blood or saliva. So I'm going to dry it off just a little bit to ensure I don't have any bubbles or anything on there. And now we're ready to start capturing our digital impression. I activate the camera. I'm going to go into the mouth and start capturing. I'm going to start directly over the occlusal surface and move to the mesial and then my mesial neighbor. And now we're ready to start our rotations. We're rotating down the buccal aspect, capturing the interproximal, the buccal of the preparation, the distal interproximal, and now the distal neighbor. Now I'm going to start my loop around because I need to capture the occlusal of the distal neighbor plus I need to capture the lingual aspect. So I'm looping around to the lingual and now the lingual interproximal on the distal, the lingual of the preparation, my mesial interproximal, and then now my lingual of my neighbor. So now I'm ready to capture my bite registration. So all I need to do is click on the bite scan tab and now we're ready to capture our impression of our opposing via the bite registration. I have Terry close into the bite registration just to ensure that it's still good. And then now we're ready to scan the bite. So I'm going to activate the camera and we're ready to capture the bite registration. I like to start over the distal most tooth and then move mesial. So we're capturing the distal neighbor kind of with a zigzag pattern back and forth. I'm able to capture the bite registration and the common data which are the neighbors. And of course, the common data on the mesial aspect, which is the mesial neighbor. So I'll go ahead and take all this out and give Terry a break. And what you can see here is we've been able to capture the distal neighbor and the mesial neighbor and the common data, which is the bite registration. I'm going to tell the system what part of the bite's important to me by selecting that surface. of the impression. Now I've selected my opposing tooth surface. I can rotate this and take a look at it. I have the ability to trim it if I need to. So if I selected too much area, I can trim that area off and take a look at it again and trim a little bit more if I need to. Now I'm happy with my opposing selection area and I'm ready to move to the margin tab. When we go to the margin tab, we have to verify our orientation, which is just the position of the model. And I'm ready to now mark my margin. I'm going to utilize the trace feature, but very easily by activating this feature here called the show feature, it's going to show me where my margin is very super gingival. And in this area where the margin is a little more equigingival, I can see the margin very easily, but I also have another tool called ice that I can use to verify the margin being able to see the actual raw data that the camera captured, ice view, it stands for I see everything. So I'm ready to mark my margin. I just get it on there. I don't worry about it being perfect because I know I have the ability to correct it if I miss it somewhere. So I just get the margin on there. And then I go back and fine tune it by pulling it out in the areas I need to and looking at it from different views. 
and making sure I'm happy with this margin. Now in the interproximal surface where it was really hard for me to see my margin, I'll utilize the ice feature. And this feature is really going to enable me to be able to check my margin and make sure that I'm happy with it because I can actually see the raw data that the camera captured. And here on the buckle view, I can see I missed it a little bit. So I have the ability to correct that. When I'm happy with my margin, I'm now ready to move to design. When I go to design, I'm going to see the library tooth drop on there, which I chose Lee Culp's Library of Anatomy. That tooth's going to drop on there and then morph to match the neighboring dentition, looking at cusp height, marginal ridge, minimum material thickness, contact, and occlusion to give me my initial proposal. This is my initial proposal, and I'm pretty happy with that. I don't see any alignment changes I need to make, except maybe expanding the lingual aspect just a little. So I can go to my freeform toolbox, which is more artistic tools, and I can close embrasure areas, or maybe bring a cusp out, or increase some contour. Looking at the tooth in different aspects, I have the ability to lower the marginal ridge height, or maybe round off these cusps a little bit if they're a little bit too pointy. When I'm happy with the design aspect, then what I want to do is check function. How is my tooth going to function? I can make it look good, but if it doesn't function well, we have a problem. So now I'm going to check my bite. So right now what I'm doing is I'm checking the occlusion. By placing my posing onto the model and turning on my view contacts, I can see color-coded my contact strength and positives and negatives. And I can very easily see I have a few high spots. So with one click of the contact refinement icon, I have the ability to circle the high spots and adjust them one at a time, or I could click refine and adjust them all. I prefer to circle. When I'm happy with my occlusion, we're then ready to check our interproximal contacts. When I take a look at my interproximal contacts, I have the ability to change them, automatic, or I could have also smoothed them. So I'm happy with the distal. We'll take, take a look at the mesial. Mesial looks really good. So now I'm going to check my material thickness. Occlusally, we're really good. Maybe a little thin area here. Lingually, I might thicken up this margin area here just a little bit just by dropping a little material on there using the dropper tool, virtually waxing. Same thing on the buckle, I might drop a little bit here just to thicken that area up. But on the occlusal aspect, I know that the opposing tooth has to come into play. So I'm going to take a look at my opposing in relation to the thin spot by slicing. So we have an x-axis, a y-axis, and a z-axis, and I can slice into that thin area. And I have the ability to see how much room I have to make changes. So I can see very easily, I have plenty of room here to thicken this area up. And now I'm happy with my thickness. So now we're ready to go to the mill tab. We made the tooth look good, and then we ensured that it's going to function well. I have the ability to move the sprue if I need to. As long as it's away from the margin and out of the contact, I'm pretty happy with the location of it. I don't really worry buccal or lingual, just away from the margin and out of the contact. We choose our block size. The restoration will fit on a 12 or a 14. I have a 12 in stock, so I'm going to send that on a size 12. It's going to mill faster. With one click of the send to mill icon, I click OK, and I'm going to see that my restoration is being sent to the mill. That's how easy it is.